And boy, am I excited. Obviously for me, a Springbok supporter, my team playing the long-awaited, you know, so-called grudge match. Uh, we know a lot of things have been said in the media. The Irish feel they are the best team because they were able to beat the Springboks. They've had a good record at beating the Springboks in previous years, um, but not at Loftus or in South Africa as much, you know. It was more um, away games and, and that kind of thing. But this is the one team under Rassi's reign that he hasn't been able to beat uh, because they lost against them in that playoff game in the World Cup. And obviously a very big occasion. Everyone's waited for it. It's been hyped by the Irish media especially. Um, I the, the, the Springboks team have been announced, um, but the Irish have not announced these. But we've got a good idea of where Ireland will go with the team. So I thought I'd just discuss it today. The game will be obviously on Loftus first felt, which is a high altitude. Uh, Glasgow Warriors did beat the Bulls there three weeks ago and showed that altitude is not everything, but it is something that do affect these players. It just affects their breathing, obviously, uh, some, some of the players. And of course, also then, you can just imagine over 60,000 people, it will be a, a packed stadium and you will really feel that Bach vibes coming through. So it's going to be a spectacle of a game. Uh, both sides, really, really good teams, you know, and strong sides and, and have shown through the World Cup just how good they are, both of them. And this has kind of come down to, to, to one of those epic, epic battles, you know. Um, the thing is, the thing that's most important for me is I think for, for what Rassi tried to do when I'm looking at the starting lineup that, he's went, that, he, that he went for, 20 of the 23 players in the starting lineup is actually the same players that lost that game against Ireland in the World Cup. Now, to me, that is very clever pickings in. He doesn't have to still hype these guys up. They're already hyped. They know what is at stake. Rassi knows what he needs to do to get these guys now, you know, amped. They already, through just the stuff that's been said on the press, you know, Eben Etzebev's words, um, you know, they didn't like the fact that he said when he was shaking their hands with, with that loss that they said, see you in the final. And Etzebev said to them all, how can you say that? One of the most dominant teams, which is the All Blacks, you'll be facing in the quarters over years that's been brilliant, you know, at playing World Cups and you just disregarding them. And he, he thought they just overlooked their opponents and kind of felt they were a bit overconfident. Uh, he was just taken apart by the Irish press um, for saying that, but it was a very valid point. But anyway, let's not go into that too much. What that means is uh, a lot that these players are playing for. I can tell you now, they feel this is a grudge match. As much as they've won the World Cup, I think this, this, this game is being treated as another World Cup game. Um, for the Springboks, obviously, to, to just stamp it down to say, we are the champs, let's put this to bed. And also for a lot of those players to get their last say um, in this game. So if we look at this, the starting lineup, you can see the Springboks have gone for such an experienced team. Rassi has really gone for experienced team. He's gone for Oxenche, uh, Bongi and Bonambi, and Franz Malherbe. That's the best three that you can pick in the front. Um, there's a lot of other names that you can want to go throw in the mix there, but it is the most three consistent good scrummages in the World Cup and through the, the last two, three years in Springbok Rugby. So a really solid front pack. You want to put, obviously, you can say Malcolm Marks above Bongi there, uh, but Malcolm Marks had an injury, and, you know, it is one of those cases where they have to kind of slowly put him back in so he can just, you know, get back in with that knee and, and, and build on it. So they don't want to throw him in there right from the start. Going to give him second half. I think very good decision so far in that front front row. Then looking at your your, uh, your two locks, can't go wrong. Same guys that's played all year last year. Both super experienced. Etzebev almost at the 100th test. Danger man. Uh, and they will be on the next level. I know against Wales, Etzebev that looked a bit off form and, and all of that. This will be different because there's different emotions that's been stirred up for this game. And there's a point to prove. Then going, you know, into your trio there, Sia Kulisi, captain back, didn't play in the Wales game, uh, comes back from Racing, uh, and 
from France and he is always instrumental at getting this team up and just his energy that he brings. The hard man, Peter Steph de Toy. I just saw this week he, uh, he was interviewed and explaining all the injuries that he's had to go, go through over the years and he's still the number one option there and definitely deservedly so, you know, been player of the year in previous years. A phenomenal, phenomenal player, this guy. Um, and such, you know, a machine to have on the field. So he will definitely be putting a, a lot of pressure, you know, on young uh, Jack Crowley, um, and whomever they're going to play on scrum off, because we also know Jamison Gibson Park will not be playing for Ireland in this game, which is, you know, no Sexton there anymore, and Jamison Gibson Park not there. It's it's important that nine ten combination that needs to command the game, that they might be under pressure of a guy like Peter Steffi Toy in that position. You've got Kwaha Smith uh, there at eight. And it's good to see these guys start a bit, you know, like a Kwaja Smith starting for a change. Give him that, that opportunity because Kwaja Smith, you guys know Kwaja Smith um, and, and what a type of play he is. The way that he can jackal over the ball and get over those balls and, and turn them around. He's just so good at it. Um, and, you know, if you can get more minutes out of him and give him more opportunities to turn balls around, why will you not want to do that? So to me... I like this this first eight year more than many of the previous teams that's been picked in previous uh, games uh, leading up to this one. I just think it's such a such a good starting team. Um, what I will say is, you know, unlucky for a guy like Ivan Ruiz to not start at eight. But the guy's still young. He will get his opportunities. He played very well against Wales. Also unlucky to not be on the bench. But still, I mean, you know... Uh, you got to understand for this occasion, you want the best you can put on. This is being treated as, I can tell you now, like a World Cup game. There, You can see the Springboks intent with this game is to, to go out there. And as they said, Afrikaans, donner them. <laughs> that means really go out there and, 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 you know, really put down this stamp to say, you are in our country now. We are the champs. That's what I'm seeing with this team, guys. Um, then looking at that uh, uh, back line... Again, loads of experience, very familiar names there. Faf de Klerk at nine. Great option with Andre Pollard. Those two guys know each other so well. And Andre Pollard, you know, the commander. You can say what you want. That guy on the field, that's, that's a guaranteed probably 10 points on the board for you. And how, uh, you know, Mr. Reliable he is, you know. As they say, ice in the veins. He just puts them over, um, and he's been in great form lately. He, he seems to be a lot better at picking, uh, kicking at poles. Um, and currently, Orens uh, had an injury uh, back in the team. No doubts, as he gets back from his injury, he will be great in this game. Then you've got Cheslin Colby on the other wing. So, currently, Orens and Chesley, Cheslin Colby on the wings. Say no more. Cheslin Colby on the wings, on the wing. Those are two danger men, you know. They can finish from anywhere. Then your two centers, been your informed centers over the last while, Damian Delalindi and Jesse Creel. Um, been playing well. Both these guys have been deserved there. Um, and then, of course, Vili LaRue, another guy who had an injury, um, uh, couldn't make that final for the Bulls. He's back in the mix. And I think Vili has now, you know, made the point that I am the best, best fullback still in South Africa. If you see what he did with the Bulls and, and how he commands the back line, gives it structure, sees space, um, how he distributes the ball, you know, most assists and I think a Springbok jersey for tries. He's, he, he, he's definitely deserved of that 15 jersey. Unlucky, again, for guys like, you know, um, I must say, Lucanio Am, that's had an injury that's been out forever. Also, classy, classy player. But you have to say... How do you take out Jesse Creel with the form that he has had lately? So I um, will have to work for that spot again. And that's going to be an interesting one for the future to see who will be first picked. But it's good rivalry. It, it shows the depth in uh, Springbok rugby, you know. Um, then looking at those wings, you know, there's, there's a lot of wings that's now uh, not in the first choice there, you know. Mapimpi is not there. You know, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of young young guys also coming up. So a lot of competition, guys. And even, um, you know, at fullback, there there's a lot of competition coming in uh, with a, like a, the, the likes of a Fassi, 
you know, uh, so these guys now know this is your most experienced players and they know they're now starting to play for their spots to keep their spots in this team. But definitely Rossi saying, okay, guys, here is your grudge match. You've still got those feelings. Go back out there and go prove yourselves. I'm sure that's what's going to be said, uh, you know, in the sheds there. Um, then looking at the, 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 the bench, Malcolm Marks on the bench, who, who better to bring off the bench? Um, and then, of course, uh, Gerrit Steenkamp. Steenkamp coming in, um, that is an interesting one, how he's been brought into the mix. He had a great season for, for the Bulls. He's got the ability to, to also jackal and snipe balls and steal balls away. Even though he plays up front, he's, he's just he's, he's a talented player. He's really showed this year and, and put a stamp on to say, hey, look at me. And he's been given the opportunity, which is interesting there, as um, you know, uh, another opportunity for him where there's many other props that they could have looked at picking. But going for Steenkamp, again, some new blood and starting to now you know, develop these new players in the team. Uh, but a very good player. Vincent Koch there, again, bringing the experience from the bench, knows all about the bomb squad. Um, <clears throat> uh, Salman Murat had a great season. Um, and yeah, you, you got to say, you know, uh, Salman Murat, Murat get, making the team. And, you know, again, some other locks might feel a little bit unlucky, you know, uh, to not be there, you know. Uh, but you got to have to say Salman Murat deserved his spot here um, after his season and then giving him the chance there. Then, of course, big, the big Viking, Archie Sneijman, also coming from that bench. That's going to be some danger. So Archie is still yeah, um, on, on that bench still. And then, of course, you know, as they call him, Eskom, he puts out the lights because the lights go off in South Africa when uh, it's load shedding there where they have, don't have enough power, by the way. So they call him Eskom. That is actually... Uh, Marco van Staden, who is, uh, they say, he puts guys light out. He's just a great carrier of the ball. Interesting that they still go for Marco and they still so, um, you know, Marco to me is always one of those players. He never does anything wrong, but he never really stands out to me. So I thought by now they might have been looking at new players, but he's still making the squad. Then, of course, that's your 6 2 split. So that's your 6 forwards. Then you still have your two backs. Now, they're going for Grant Williams here, and I can tell you why Grant Williams is a great pick when you want to go for... That's where the, why the Springboks need more kind of like utility players. They, they, they're they looking for uh, uh, backline utility players because that allows them to play the 6-2 and even sometimes the 7-1. Because they've got Sasha uh, Mangazulu in, um, which is... Uh, this is a young guy that's come in played a phenomenal game uh, everyone's talking about this guy how comfortable he looked on attack defense he's kicking on point and immediately you can see the shift where Marnie kind Kana of is Marnie Lubbock has been pushed out and a lot of people will say but that's a bit unfair but I think a great decision because Marnie's been missing kicks bring the young man in give him the opportunity in the big games and see how this guy performs because to be honest the Springboks might not say this in the press conferences and stuff, but I'm telling you, they are quickly looking for a second option uh, to, to have. There should really be three fly-offs. Marnie might still be there as the third option, but he might soon be moving to third option with the likes of a Mangazulu and how well he's playing. This guy's still very young. Maybe not all the experience, but Marnie Libok has also not got that much international experience as such. So... It's going to be, for me, I'm really excited to see this this young guy, you know, make his name on the world stage and, and for everyone around the world to start learning who this guy is because he's going to be something special for the future. But again, also, why? Utility. So you can use, Mami Zulu has played center, um, um, he's played uh, fullback, and he can play fly off. So, so he can slot in anywhere. So... They've got enough utility between Grant Williams and Mangazulu. And then, of course, your strong bomb squat, as you would call it. I don't even know if bomb squat even has that same kind of significance anymore after the Springboks have started doing seven ones. Um, but definitely, again, showing them they're going to go in there with their forwards and really want to overpower the Irish. 
Um, a quick, then just quickly looking at the Irish. Um, yeah, uh, Hugo Keenan, fullback is not there. Um, so, you know, very experienced on fullback. He's not there. We, we still go on about Sexton, but Sexton is a big loss. Johnny Sexton at 10 is not there. Um, Jameson Gibson Park, really dangerous. On nine, that's not there. Um, you know, there, there's, some, there's some important positions there where you got new guys in. I'm not saying that a Jack Crowley is not just as good. I mean, the games that Jack Crowley has played lately, he's looked amazing stepping into the Johnny role. But he, does, he will lack some of the things that Johnny used to bring in these big test matches, I believe. And, and the same for Gibson Park, you know. Um, Gibson Park's ability to, to see space. space and and, and I, I just love the way Gibson Park uh, around the, the fringes, you know, how good he is around the fringes. So I think they'll both, they, 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 they will be, it's not like there's not good enough replacements for these players, but they won't be... A, they won't have that little bit extra that these players had. I mean, you still have a Bundiaki there. <clears throat> you still have Omahani. You still have the loads of players there. Van der Fleer, you name them. There's loads that you can name up that is quality, quality players in this team. It's not like I'm saying it suddenly is a, is a watered-down team that will not stand up to the Springboks. But I do have to feel it is a bit, bit weaker than the World Cup side. It's, it's not as strong. They, they're going to have to tour here. The Springboks has come with uh, uh, Russia Russell with some interesting things, bringing Tony Brown in. You could see against that Wales team how they were looking to move the ball more. More of a, you know, you see some of that all-black flavor rugby coming in of, of the quick moving of the ball. Um, Russia Rasmus also brought in Yaku Paper. Now you'd say, what does a referee, what's he going to help with? Yaku Paper knows all the new rules when you can tackle the scrum off when you can't um, he's been basically blowing the games on training sessions so th they're using him to see that they scrum correctly he will give them directions where they're in red zone areas where they could get penalized and rusty again coming with new ideas to see how he can stick within the laws but still push it as far as he can within those laws and I think a great addition to Springbok Rugby having Yaku Paper there to to kind of guide them to stay within the laws and, and you know that's really I think also going to help them. When I'm just looking at the total package playing at Loftus, the big occasion, the, the, the emotion that will come with it, a bit of a, you know we will show you type of thing from the Springboks because the press has had so much to say. Right to the World Cup, if you go watch the Chasing the Sun documentary, a lot of her players was quite hurt by some of the ridiculous stuff that these press guys were saying about the 6-2 split, 7-1, and just about the players in general. Um, so there's this rivalry, rivalry with the press, and we know Ireland's coming here to point, uh, want to uh, uh, prove a point, but I just think this is going to be a little bit a step too far for them. You know, uh, I just think at Loftus first game, I was concerned about co cohesion because there was a lot of new players in that Wales game. But they've gone back to the guys that played together in the World Cup. These guys are going to find each other very, very quickly again. Um, what happened, what they were trained last year in the World Cup, they won't forget that much. I think it will be a very similar style rugby to what they played in the World Cup. There will be some kicking uh, they'll they'll default back to what they did at the World Cup. They'll do exactly the same, play the same type of style. And I just don't know if Ireland is exactly still the same team they were at the World Cup. I just think with the traveling, everything, and a few players not there, and just I don't think it's going to be the same occasion. They won't have as much Irish fans. There'll be there will be a sea of Springboks there singing Rusty you know, when their zombie song comes on, which will obviously frustrate them even a little bit more. So all of this, I just I just feel the Springboks will be too much. I still think the best shot that Ireland would have would be for me this first test because this is the one where, you know, everyone might still have some cohesion issues. They haven't played together for a while, the Springboks. And that, that might play in their favor because they basically just Munster and Leinster's the main two teams. So a lot of them has kind of played together. But I still feel 
my predictions for this game, guys, 11 points win for the Springboks. Uh, 11 point win. Uh, I, th I think, like I always say, and I know it sounds like the old cliche, it will be in that first half. It's still going to be a tight game. But I do feel that the Springboks by the second half, early in the second half, will start scoring a try or two more and go ahead by 10 to 15 points and then Ireland will pull, pull it back a bit. But not enough. I feel at least a comfortable win with about 11 points. I might be out, might be closer, but I do believe the Springboks will pull this one through, guys. Um, interesting game, mouth-watering game. Um, I hope you, you guys are going to watch it from all over the world. Um, I will also be watching the, the All Black one. Also, there's more to come, you know. Um, all the other games, you know, Wales versus Australia, that should also be interesting to see how those two teams are going to go. But the fact is, this one is all about the Springboks. I will be doing one about the All Blacks as well when the team comes out and to give my opinions and my predictions. But I hope you enjoyed my video and thanks for watching uh, my videos from all over. I appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.